All right, we are here for another Tuesday evening. I'm going to give a couple people, or I'm going to give uh, people a few minutes to get in here. We are starting about a half an hour late, just because uh, I had a previous uh, previous thing that I had to be at this evening. So we're here now. Um, we're going to give a little shop tour tonight. Uh, it's my shop is a little messy, but um, we've also got some fun things coming up. Uh, we'll give you guys a tour of the shop and go from there. So I'll, uh, I'll give people a couple minutes to get in here. Um, again, we are running about a half an hour, uh, behind, or we scheduled it a half an hour behind just because of, uh, prior engagements. Uh, I see Angie's here. So, Hey, Angie, Todd, what's going on? Jim, it is Tuesday. It is Tuesday. We are going to give a little shop tour. My plan is to start with my uh, resin casting station, uh, show you around there. We're going to go to some blank storage, and then we're going to go to the main shop where the dust uh, where the dust flies. I'm sorry if you're hearing our, our air conditioner right now. It's, it's running, but uh, it's keeping the house cool. We just got that replaced, so that's, that's been nice. Norm, how's it going? So as we are waiting for people to uh, show up, I do want to thank my patrons, my top tier patrons, Mark and Angie. Uh, I appreciate the support. And I also want to mention that I do have a new patron this week. Our new patron is Lisa. So thank you so much. If you guys are interested in supporting me, uh, Patreon is one of the ways to do that. The link is in the description uh, of this video. If not, that's totally cool, but I do appreciate my patrons. So thank you so much. Um, last week, we turned a junior Dennis. Uh, that was a fun turn. Unfortunately, I don't have that pen with me right now because uh, I took it to work and it's currently sitting on my desk. So unfortunately, I don't have that one, but there is a picture of that completed pen on my Instagram. Again, all the social media links are in the description of this uh, of this video. I also want to welcome back Todd from TLF Works. He is moderating uh, the chat tonight. He is back. He had, uh, he had his knee replaced. So he's been doing therapy and getting better, uh, every day. So it's great to see him back. He moderates this. He puts out some cool turning videos. His information is also in the description. So please go check him out. Uh, subscribe to his channel. If you haven't already, uh, I know he would appreciate that. Okay, so I'm going to turn my camera around, and when I turn the camera around, you guys are going to see the casting station. Um, so let's go to camera, and we are going to flip the camera. So here's my casting station. I'm going to zoom out just a touch. So here we have it. I have my Harbor Freight pressure pot, which is this guy here. This is the pressure pot that I started with, and uh, it's, it's gone through quite a few casts. Um, I also have a mold rack that kind of lives in there. This is the mold rack from P-Town Subby. It also has two more um, of these shelves that I could put in here if I wanted to. Um, so it, it holds quite a few blanks. It does, it does pretty well for me. Um, and it's still, it's still going pretty strong. I, I use it quite a bit. Um, the casting bench is kind of, you know, all over the place, but I have my vacuum pump here, uh, on this side for my stabilizing, uh, chamber. I have a turn tech or, uh, yeah, a turn tax, um, resin chamber for the cactus juice. So when I stabilize blanks, I, um, I use that. 
we've got our gloves here, so we, we always have our uh, personal protective equipment. And then I have some individual pen, uh, pen blank molds uh, here, as well as over here. And these are all P-Town Subby uh, molds. I also have a block mold from P-Town Subby. And one thing I like to do is this is the uh, five and a quarter by five and a quarter by one and a half. There you can see the dimensions. Um, what I like to do is I know the line, uh, I know I like my, my blanks to be about between seven eighth, between three quarters and seven eighths of an inch. So I just make a line and I've actually done this enough times that I can, that the line is still kind of faint. So I can just remark the line I know that's where I'm trying to uh, fill my block mold to when I when I go ahead and fill that. So that makes it really easy. So there's molds here. These are ring ring blank molds. So these get filled up quite a bit. If I uh, I have a couple more just off camera over here. So. I use quite a few of the individual pen blank molds. I love the HDPE molds um, because you don't need to use, at least I haven't found that I've needed to use um, mold release with them. So that has, that, that's actually worked out um, really well. And they, they just, you, 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 unscrew, you unscrew these three screws, pop this off and it, it comes right off. Uh, if we, pivot just a little bit. I have uh, some stabilizing stuff in here. There's some bolts to keep the, um, the wood down in the chamber. I also have a, uh, a silicone mold from P-Town Subby. This is the handle blank. This one might be hard to see, but it's the one and three quarter by one and three quarter uh, by six inch. Uh, this is Two, a two cavity mold. These are for handle blanks and call blanks. Um, these, these are the other two shelves that go uh, on that mold rack for that for the pressure pot. So sometimes I use those, but a lot of times I don't. If we move down just a, a touch, there's more. There's more down here. This is another HDPE mold. It is two inches by two and five eighths by seven inches. And that's a knife scale mold. What happens is I fill this with resin and then I resaw this this way and get two, two, um, two sets of knife scales out of this. Here is some stabilized material that I have. Um, I'll go ahead and show you guys that. There's some stabilized material that I'm uh, in the process of working with. Uh, there's some cherry burl in there. There's some big leaf maple burl. I've got all this labeled. So uh, there's some cotton wood, um, all kinds of fun stuff. So I have, I, I have those that I can cast uh, when I get to them. And then the bottom here are just, those are just empty um, caster's choice mica powders because those are the, those are the, the empty jars that I am going to recycle one day and use. And then this other stuff is mostly um, an old rotary phone that I need to take care of, but then also more casting, uh, hybrid casting material, sweet gum pods and some other burls. If we move over here, if I open this, um, this section here, I've got, I've got cactus juice down here. I have some paint, I have some mold release, and I have some finishes down, down there. Um, this is where also where I keep my cups for, uh, resin casting. So that's kind of a, a little bit of a catch all. Um, sorry. So yeah, there's the resin casting station 
if we come over here, we have uh, the we have our our scale. This is a Harbor Freight um, Centec infrared thermometer, um, just to take temperatures. We have the Ryobi uh, um, powered screwdriver. And then we also have the uh, hot glue gun. Over here, just off to what would be my left when I'm casting, we have the uh, the, pre the five gallon pressure pot. It's on casters, so it, it lives on the floor. Uh, this is the California Air Tools five gallon pressure pot. I got it at uh, Woodcraft. And then over, over here, we have the Miles Craft, uh, Miles Craft pen press. Um, this Miles Craft pen press has been a complete game changer. Working with this has been much easier than uh, the other one that I have. The other one that I have was, um, it was a great starter pen press, but the adjustments for me personally um, just got to be a little much. Okay. All right, so I'm just checking the chat out. Todd says someone just subscribed, so he's at 699. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to Todd TLF Works, if you haven't subscribed, go be his 700 subscriber. Please and thank you. So there's my casting station. Um, Jim says, Todd, I hope you heal quickly. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so now... I'm going to move you guys to blank storage. So here's my casting station. Now we're just going to turn this way. And the lights are off on this side because I don't normally work on, on this side too much. But if we go straight across here, I'm gonna turn this light on. Hopefully it's not too bad. But I have some blanks that I need to label here but then if we go over here, this is where I have all of my blank storage. So there are, there are tubs here that are labeled with the different types of blanks that I have. Um, that's for when I do shows and we go on the road. Um, those go in there, they're organized, they're ready to go. Um, if we look at this blank storage, these first two we have are um, pine cone hybrids. We have some stabilized burls in uh, stabilized burl hybrids in these two uh, sections. We have some deer antler hybrids. Um, I've got a lot more deer antler ready to go. I just haven't uh, cast it because it smells really, really bad. I have some Choya cactus, some that's cross cut and some that's rip cut. I've got a few sweet gum pods. This is stabilized maple, uh, just like regular maple wood. I die stabilize that. So these are actually, these actually are uh, purple. They, they turn out purple when they, when they get turned. Uh, these are, th these ones are just straight alumalite blanks. Um, this section, these are flip cup pours. These are uh, ver ver uh, variations of other things. Here's where I have some um, bottle stopper blanks. These are ring blanks and other cutoffs, some Jissy style blanks. Um, we have knife scales here, handle blanks here. We have some Corian pen blanks here. Um, I've got a couple watch parts here, uh, more Alumalite resin, uh, Alumalite clear slow, and then here is where I have my bespoke uh, blanks. So that's where the blanks live um, when they're not getting turned. Okay. Doug at Pole Barn was number 700. Thank you, sir. 
I appreciate that, and I'm sure Todd appreciates that as well. Okay, so now that that's blank storage, we are going to rotate, and we are going to go into the main part of the shop. So we have a dust trap here, and then we come into the shop, and the first thing we see is the rigid R4512 table saw. Now, this is hooked up to dust collection, and before we get too far into talking about tools, um, I'm just going to go around the shop. So to the right, we would see the lathe, we would see all other lathe tool accessories and blanks and things like that, and then we have some wood, and then this is basically a 360 of the shop. So there's, there's the door again, right here. Now, this shop is about 10 and a half feet wide by 29 feet long. It's half a basement and, you know, my wife and I, we have been talking quite a bit lately. Um, there will be a new Crosscut Creations Crosscut Creations show. I don't know where that's going to be yet, but it will not be in this basement, um, and it will be somewhere else. So um, that's all I know right now. But um, you know, this this could you know this, we'll, we'll still be in the shop for a little while, but uh, this is not going to be the long term. Yes, this shop is messy. I have been working to start to clean it. So, um, we're, you know, we're slowly getting there. So I mentioned the uh, table saw R4512. If we go to the left, the first thing we see is this stand with the grinder on it. This is the slow speed grinder that I have. It is the Rikon 8-inch bench grinder. It's a low speed. Um, I honestly don't remember what the um, what the model is, but again, it was a Woodcraft purchase as well. If we look at the uh, rest of the cart, we've got some finishes. We've got some carbide uh, diamond card uh, sharpeners, and then this box down here. I'm going to take this box out and I'm going to put it on the table saw, but we're not going to open it quite yet. These are all the uh, blanks that I've, that I have that are personal blanks that, um, that I'm hoping to turn at one point. So there's, so there's the slow speed grinder. If we move over, we have the Ryobi 10 inch sliding miter saw. And this is the, this was the genesis, <coughs> excuse me, this was the genesis um, for my shop name, Crosscut Creations. This was the first power tool that I got. Um, this was the first power tool that I, that I got, um, power saw. So it just made sense that uh, you know, the miter saw mainly does cross cuts. So cross cut creations, that's where it came from. Bob Lee is in the house. What's going on, Bob? You have been here. We, I need to, uh, I need to get to your shop when all this mess is over and we need to, you know, we need to make something. Um, okay. So if we continue on to this back corner, I have my Harbor Freight dust collector. Now my Harbor Freight dust collector, it is a one dust collector, but I did uh, turn it into a two stage. So there's the lid for the two stage. I bought a trash can and then there's a pipe that runs from here to here. And then there's a pipe that runs from here down here. And then right under where you guys are, 
sitting right now, I have a Y that splits off into another 25 foot hose that is right here. Um, it's kind of out of the way now, but then it, there's also another one that goes directly to the table saw. So that, uh, that has helped dust collection quite, uh, quite a bit. It hasn't solved it, but it's done pretty well for itself. Now that we have the dust collector, we can move on to this back table. The back table has a lot of um, a lot of like just stationary tools. We have the Ryobi four by thirty six belt sander and six inch disc sander. I square up a decent amount of blanks, uh, pen blanks on that sander. So that's actually done pretty well for, uh, for me. Next, we have the Rikon 10 inch bandsaw. This is the uh, 10 inch, it's 10 305. If we go to the next tool, this is the, the next tool we have is the spindle sander. And it is a it is the Wood River brand from uh, from Woodcraft. The label says that the model number is S one Z dash nine zero J S. It's a half horsepower motor. Um, and, and honestly, I don't use it a ton, but when I do need it, um, it, it it does pretty well. This has kind of become the catch-all that really needs organized. Um, my router table obviously hasn't been used in a little while. Um, it's a Craftsman router table. I also have a Craftsman router, but um, this guy, I need to figure out what's wrong because the last couple times I went to turn it on, it decided not to turn on. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Next, we have the Next Wave Automation <laughs> Piranha XL uh, CNC. This is um, it is a Next Wave Automation product. Uh, it, I got I went with the XL version. That is a that is a 12 by 24 cutting area. Um, to cut 12 by 24 is a little difficult, and in that really it really does max out that machine but it does pretty well for me. So um, it's not huge. And there are some times where I wish that I had a bigger machine, but um, you know, that's one day, you know, one day. Moving on, we have clamps in a, that need a clamp rack. Uh, we have some pipe clamps. We have some Harbor Freight clamps. Uh, we have a couple Bessie clamps. So, so that's where that's where the clamps are, as well as on my, uh, on the bench. This was the first bench that, uh, that I made uh, with the help of one of my buddies. It has a surface that, honestly, this is looking pretty good right now uh, compared to what it normally is. I've got some pen blanks back here that uh, need to get turned. Um, it's got a shelf underneath here for some more catch-all storage and then if we if we pan up just a tad uh, we have more some more things up here so uh, this one right here that is the air filtration 462-400 uh, system from Rikon so it's an ambient air cleaner um, that has helped the shop out quite a bit and then just some other um, catch all type things, some router bits, some drill bits, uh, things like that. One of the things that my next shop is definitely going to have is an outfeed table. So what I want ideally to happen is the bench that's right here that I just showed you guys, um, that might or might not have a space in my next shop. But what I want to do is I want to come right here and I want to build an outfeed assembly table um, so I can have the outfeed uh, support 
as well as um, just the extra storage already built into a bench and it not be everywhere else. Um, this blue tub here, that is random scraps of wood that I need to figure out what to do. Uh, they need to figure out where to go. Now, if we move along here, we have another, we have a toolbox that has a lot of odds and ends. Mostly it's sandpaper, it's chalk lines, it's um, screwdrivers, um, wrenches, hand tools that are generally like that. This guy, let me see. This guy here is my jointing jig. I don't have a jointer, so what happens is I have my fence on the table saw here. I put this against the fence. I clamp my piece down here and run it through, and that'll give me uh, a jointed edge so I can, I can get good glue-ups. A jointer is on my list of tools to get, but it hasn't been a high priority yet um, just because of what I'm doing. Now, if we go to, if we go back to the table saw, it is kind of in the middle of the shop. This is the R4512, and you can see the dust collection uh, does run up to the saw, so that's actually helped quite a bit. There is my box of, of blanks that I want to turn at some point. Um, so... This is what I have in that box. These are blanks that, uh, so here, here's a crosscut Choya blank that I got in an auction. This is one that I won uh, in that same auction from, these are both from Benny Ray Watkins Jr. Um, a few years ago, I went to Greg Bonier's shop in, in, uh, in the Chicago area and um, I was able to get uh, a few blanks there. I have uh, 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 MK Design or ML Design, sorry. Um, some blanks there. We have some um, Divine Island Design blanks. We have diamond cast uh, blanks. Some of these I got at the Mid-Ohio Valley Pen Turners Gathering. Some I've acquired uh, in, in uh, different swaps. This is a classic castings um, polyester resin blank. So I've got some classic castings. These are more classic castings. Um, here's a blank that I blew out the end so I couldn't use. Um, so yeah, there's, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Um, and it's just, it's just filled. So, so those are the blanks that I have to, okay, don't have to, but those are the blanks that I eventually want to turn. Um, the longer blanks here, these are diamond cast, like I said earlier, the diamond cast blanks, they're, they're longer because I do have the tools to do bespoke or custom pens. Um, I just have to practice and work through it. And I'll show you those tools. I'll show you those tools uh, momentarily. I'm going to take these blanks off the table saw and I'm going to put, um, I'm going to bring up the tools for um, bespoke pens. So one of the things uh, with the R4512, this table saw, this table saw has kind of become my outfeed table as well, or my, sorry, my assembly table, as well as my table saw. And that's one of the big reasons I want to, uh, want to build an outfeed table, but knowing that this shop is going to move at some point. I don't want to build a table and then have to move it out because being in the basement, um, whatever comes 
down into the shop has to go out of the shop. So that's been uh, kind of fun to figure out. Okay, so here's what it takes for kitless pens. And one more thing. Okay. So while this stuff is here, um, we have we have a collet chuck. So this goes on the headstock of the lathe, and then I insert the appropriate collet. What I what ends up happening is I can unscrew this, and then these uh, these pop out. Um, and hold the blank. So once I get the, so here we go. It's been a while since I've done this, but what happens is basically you pop this out and you can, um, you can switch out your collets to whatever size you want. And then when you're done, you can just uh, thread, thread it back in and then you're good to go. Um, so that's one of the more important parts to, uh, to that. These are taps and dies. Now this, this is a, this is a tenon cutting jig. It's from Jim Hines. And the way it works is you take these Allen wrenches and you, these, you undo these set screws and what happens is depending on, uh, depending on which tenon you're cutting, because you have three sections to a bespoke pen. You have the body, you have the cap, and you have uh, the section. So if I'm cutting a thicker tenon, I'm going to take this section. I'm going to put this on here, and then I'm going to make sure this lines up. And then I would tighten the set screw so that lines up perfectly. And then I'm able to cut a perfect tenon. Um, that's generally how that works. And I know this is more, this is supposed to be more of a shop tour rather than a how to turn bespoke pens. Cause, um, you know, honestly, I, I'm not very good at it. That's why I want to practice more. So, um, you know, future, once I get comfortable with it, that'll be a live stream where we turn part of a, uh, bespoke or custom pen, um, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, this is a holder. This is something that holds the taps. So when I go to uh, tap for threads uh, to make threads, um, that that holder allows us to do that. Here is the here is the die holder. You can see the dies in there now. I can put this in my tailstock and then this holds and can advance to cut threads uh, as needed. These are just drill bits that are required for uh, bespoke pen blank making. Um, and then you have calipers to, to measure because making a bespoke or a custom pen, there is a lot more precision involved than when you're just working with uh, a kit pen. Um, okay. George, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, uh, hang it off the underside of your fence rail. What are we hanging off the underside of our fence rail? Your hinge? <laughs> As we continue on, um, this this is a partially done cherry bowl filled with coffee grounds. Um, when I feel like getting back to it, it will eventually be a video on my channel. But right now, um, it's been fighting with me, and I just needed to walk away. So, um, oh, a hinged outfeed table. Yeah, I thought about doing that. But then again, as soon as, as soon as I make it, I'm sure we're going to be moving this stuff out. So we would have to, uh, 
um, do that, we would have to move that out. So I, I did think about that type of system. I just haven't pulled the trigger yet um, on building something like that. Because like I said earlier, I know as soon as I, what, you know, whatever I put down in this shop, um, it's going to have to come out at some point. So if we move on right beside our table saw is a garage sale find AMT drill press. Uh, right now I've got a three and a half inch monster of a Forstner bit in there. I'll be honest. I've only used that thing a couple times. It scares the daylights out of me. Um, we've got some not double stick tape and some bushings for ring making. Um, if we move down here, just a, just a tad, we've got some, uh, we've got some storage. So we've got some drill bits. We've got some, uh, Forstner bits, uh, and some other things. And then if we come over here, this is the DeWalt, uh, 734 planer. It's, uh, it's done pretty well for me. Um, I hook it up to dust collection and it's not perfect, but, um, honestly, it's probably just the loudest tool in my shop. Now with this, uh, with this planer, this planer and a lot of other tools that I have showed you in this, uh, in this shop tour so far, these are on my website, cross-cut-creations.com. On that website, there is a tools I use tab that you can actually see now. And you can see I have my ISO tunes, I have my lathe that I haven't talked about. Uh, I have my face shield, the pressure pot that I talked about. There are all kinds of tools on, uh, on there that are Amazon affiliate links. So if you click any of those tools uh, and then whatever you purchase using that link, I get a small kickback from, and it costs you absolutely nothing extra. Even if you don't buy that tool, um, you know, whatever you put in your cart, because you use that link, I get a small percentage of that, of that purchase. So if you guys would be so kind to use Amazon affiliate links, I would greatly appreciate it. And it costs you absolutely nothing extra. Now there are other tools under the Amazon affiliate links that, uh, that are not Amazon affiliate links, but just links to tools that I use. Um, those don't do anything for me, but if you are interested in checking those things out, um, the, 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 it is more of what I use. So if we continue on, um, I do have some more, um, I do have storage where uh, I use these big box store um, deals for pen kits. So I have pen kits here. I have pen kits, more pen kits right here. That's how I organize them. They need a better long-term solution than the floor. But in my new shop, wherever that ends up being, uh, my plan is to use way more of the wall space and build more shop organization, uh, features. Similarly, I also use a, uh, a similar um, deal to house all my pen bushings. So I have, uh, these are all turned between centers. I have the adapters. I have Zens, Juniors, Cigars, Tiny Giant, Sierra, Neurals, Bold Action, Mistral, Levesh, Executive, Vertex Click, uh, Magnum Bold Action, Emperor, El Grande, Baron, um, they're great uh, turn between center bushings. Um, I was fortunate enough at the last Mid Ohio Valley Pen Turners gathering to uh, acquire them, and um, so so that was that was a huge step up because before I was just using this guy here to house all my um, mandrel bushings, and they're still in there and they still work just fine. Um, I also have all my stickers up here. Um, so I haven't made a sticker board. That's the other thing that's going to be in the new shop. I'm going to have a dedicated sticker board and all these stickers I have here are going to go on these sticker boards. So 
if you want to do a sticker swap, let me know. Um, I already mentioned my turning um, shelving. I have some uh, some bowl blanks and platter blanks down here. I have some pen blanks on this level. I have more of the pen making materials on here. So I have some, uh, uh, I have my G3 Chuck, the no uh, that's a Nova product. Uh, I have my turning smock. I have some sandpaper. I know it doesn't look organized, but it is all there. I have my finishes. So I have the Novus polish. I have my punches. I have my ring, um, my ring chuck uh, thingy that I that I use, waste block, uh, some CA glues, and then back there I also have some denatured alcohol, some boiled linseed oil, um, and some acetone. So those those are where all of those type of uh, things live. Now here I have. A pile of wood that Bob Lee was kind enough to donate to my shop and if we look over here there's even more wood and in that in this dark abyss over here it's hard to see but there's basically that's more wood storage so that's where that's where the wood gets stored um, obviously that's why they call it wood storage. Um, but again, my plan for the new shop is to have it, uh, to have all of this wood be, uh, horizontally stored either on a wall or in a loft or however that ends up looking. But I want horizontal storage where I can easily get to it. And instead of this disaster that exists over here. Now here is what I would consider the most used tool in the shop. I use my table saw quite a bit, but uh, at heart, I absolutely love, love, love turning. Uh, so this is the Rikon 70-220 VSR. Uh, VSR stands for variable speed and reverse. So what I can do is if I move, sorry guys, if I move around the corner now, I can go here, I can flip this up, I can adjust this, and I can move this belt. The further right I go, the faster the lathe goes. So this, is a, this would be at its fastest setting, this would be at the middle setting, and this would be at the slowest setting. And the nice thing here is I can, once I'm at the setting that I want, I can drop this down I can close this up and then I can turn it on here. And when I turn it on, it's actually pretty quiet. And I'm not, this is how, this is how quiet it is. Now, the nice thing with this is if we look over here, there is a, there is a speedometer here and there's a dial here so I can I can turn the speed up or I can turn the speed down so that first that first belt goes you know from about 200 250 to about 750 if I move it over one it goes a little higher and if I move it over to the third one it goes up to almost 4,000 RPMs, usually about 3,800, give or take, um, which is what I normally turn pens at. Now, finally, I have my lathe tool wall. I did make a video on this, and you can actually see that I, I need to update my lathe tool wall because I have tools over here that are not in a PVC pipe holder. I mitered the ends at 45s here and here so they're so I could easily get to them. Um, I need to add two more PVC pipe holders 
because right now I don't have room. These are carbide insert uh, cutters. Here's the Allen key for the uh, T shadow products, but I have a Robert Sorby parting tool uh, right there. And then I also have the uh, T shadow negative rake scraper right here, which you guys have seen quite a few uh, times when I've been turning. Uh, so I need to make uh, holders for them. But I also might extend this further just because eventually I want to extend my lathe tool collection. Um, but again, just like anything else in good time, I have, I have a, um, this is the medium sized handle, uh, from T shadow. This is the, um, this is the magical skew. Sorry guys. Right now I have the round cutter in there, but I could easily, I could easily take an Allen key. I could undo these, uh, these, these two Allen keys here, and I could switch them out for either the uh, square or the diamond tip. So that's really nice. Moving on. I know Bob Lee was in here earlier. I don't know if he's still here, but uh, when I first got into turning, I went to his shop because he lives about an hour east of me uh, down the road. We went, uh, I went down to his shop a handful of years ago and made my own carbide tools. Uh, he showed me the process. So I have, um, these are pretty dirty and pretty used, but I have curly maple and paduke uh, laminated handles with a brass collar. I have the negative rake round carbide. I have a negative rake radius, uh, squ square radius carbide tool. And then I also have, um, right now I need to replace the diamond tip, but this would be the diamond tip tool. For a while, I thought I was going to get into more bulb turning, and I do some bowl turning, but not a ton. Um, so I did make two more that are a lot bigger. These handles are cherry. Um, this is the bigger square carbide. And honestly, this tool scares the daylights out of me. So it very rarely gets used. This, uh, this next tool is from the same uh, ch cherry handle. And it's a, it's a round cutter. Uh, I might put a negative rake on this one and I might use it more, but I've actually found that the larger tools, uh, I just don't use as much, um, for whatever reason that could be because I do smaller stuff or, or whatever, but you know, who knows? Um, this is a pinnacle cryogenic, uh, three eighths inch bowl gouge. Uh, once I got, you know, I started on carbide because I was, afraid of the sharpening factor. But once I got the slow speed grinder and got the uh, bowl gouge, um, this produced a crazy clean cut that I was really happy with. So I've, I actually do use my bowl gouge quite a bit. And then I have um, a Robert Sorby uh, scraper. This is the, uh, this is a half an inch of steel, but it, it's, uh, I forget exactly which one it is, but, uh, you can see it's the high speed steel. It's Robert Sorby 25 millimeter. It's one inch. That's what they're calling it here. So this has done really well with, uh, smoothing bowls out after I've hollowed them. Um, it, it's, it's a solid tool. So, so that is, that is basically my shop. Um, you know, there are definitely things that I would like to do better to make it more, you know, more organized, but we also know that, you know, I also know long-term that this, this space is not going to be the answer. So I am trying to slowly clean it out, clean it up. Um, and then whenever we get into a new shop, whether that ends up being, you know, 
I, I really don't know if that's going to be two months, three months, six months, a year. I really don't know. Um, but when I end up in a new shop, we will do a, another uh, shop tour. So if you guys have anything, we'll have a conversation. Uh, I do want to thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight. This one was fun. I know we didn't turn anything or make anything, but I thought I'd just share my space. Um, you know, I, I do catch a lot of grief and a lot of, you know, a lot of people get angry that I, that, that it is, you know, dusty and dirty down here. And I do try to keep up, but sometimes it just doesn't happen and it is slowly getting better. Uh, but it is my space. So, you know, I enjoy being down here. Um, next week, I believe, uh, you know, I think we'll go ahead and try and turn something. Uh, whether that's a pen, I know there has been a ring that's been on the list for a long time. Uh, I haven't done any rings. Maybe we try something with bespoke pens. Um, I know it was, it was talked about, uh, to do a rolling pin. Um, you know, th we definitely have options, but I'm guessing that we'll probably turn a pen of some sort. Uh, if you guys have a kit that you like, you'd like to see uh, turned, let me know. But uh, that'll be the plan for next week. Once again, I do want to thank you guys for hanging out. I do want to thank my patrons one more time, uh, Mark and Angie. You guys are my top tier patrons. Uh, my new patron, Lisa, I do thank you guys. Uh, you guys are great. I appreciate you guys. Um, that is one way to support the Crosscut Creation Shop. Uh, earlier, we went ahead and we showed you guys the site where you can look at Amazon affiliate links. Those are also a great way to support the Crosscut Creation Shop without spending anything extra. Um, the other thing, the other way you could support the Crosscut Creation Shop is, um, you know, I do have a store with logo merchandise as well as uh, hand-turned items. So uh, if you pick up something from there, that helps as well. Um, other than that, that's, uh, that's what we have for tonight. Uh, Doug, thank you. Uh, thank you for hanging out with us. That is, you know, I appreciate you guys being here. I appreciate you guys in the chat. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, uh, move my camera one more time okay there we go okay so here we are i have the um i have my 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 lumber storage behind me here um that's what's that's what's behind there and my lathe is basically right there and the uh the blank storage and the other shelving is right there. Uh, so that's where I am in the shop. So if, you know, on a live stream when I'm turning, normally I move the camera just a little bit that way and I turn right here. Uh, so that's where it is for, for reference. Uh, Angie, uh, anytime we'll have to, we'll have to do this when I end up in a new shop. And again, I don't know, you know, whether the new shop is, it just all depends on how things happen and you know we're in no rush so it could happen could happen in a month could happen in six months could happen in a year who knows um so yeah thanks for hanging out with me tonight uh i do appreciate you guys uh it's always fun to do these i know we started at 5 30 tonight uh that's because i had a prior uh prior engagement but the plan is to continue the five o'clock time slot. So uh, the, that is the, that is the plan to go back to five o'clock next week. Um, but if you liked this time slot better, let me know. But for now, the plan is to go uh, at five o'clock on Tuesdays. So until next week, we will talk to you guys later. Have a good one.